You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Someone in their family sexually assaulted me from the time I was like seven years old for like 10 years. I actually started therapy a few years ago because I, I thought is the whole reason that I do this job because I'm like so messed up that I think that it's morally okay. And yeah, like every every other man I feel has just like let me down and now I'm like, if someone offered me three million to have sex with me, I'd be like, Bleh. no, fuck off. Like if it's a five digit month, it's a bad month. Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Emily Black. Emily, Hi. how are you? <laughs> Sorry, my hands are cold. That's okay. Good to see you. Yes, good to see you too. Content creator. Yes. Only fans. Yes. Only fans is the main one. Only but, fans is the main but one. But very popular on TikTok, nearly 2 million followers. Thank you. And yeah. Instagram. Yeah. I've seen a lot of your videos. Your f- videos are funny. Thank um, you. But before we get into all the madness, yeah. I always like to go back to the start of my guests, mm-hmm. where you grew up, how it all began. Uh, So I grew up in... um. In like the the center of England, like in Derbyshire, so like in a little like village, like farm town kind of thing. Um, and I always like wanted to not do a nine to five. Nine to five has never been for me. I just it just I don't understand how anyone could want to work from Monday to Friday, and the only thing they look forward to is the weekend, and then just to do it all again. It just seems like depressing. Um, and then. Yeah, when I was 18, I went to uni and I had absolutely no money. I was in loads of debt and my friend was posting a Chinese every night. And I was like, I don't understand how you make that. Like, how can you afford a Chinese every night? It's like a luxury. And then um, she told me she was a stripper. So I was like, I was freshly 18. I was like, sign me up. I'll go and do it. And I actually had a boyfriend at the time. And he was like, no, you'll be so good. Like, this will be so good for your confidence. I was like, okay. And I went there and I was really good, right? And um, yeah, and then I stopped that, went into camming for a bit and then OnlyFans. That's the summed up, Mm -hmm. but- How were you at school? I was at school. My mum was actually my teacher, so I was quite good. I moved from one school because I was bullied. I was really ugly. I was so ugly. Like, I think I probably would have believed me too. Um, but yeah, I, I I was fine. Like, I tried really hard. I got good grades. Um, and then... How bad was a billion? It wasn't... It wasn't... Awful. I don't... I think other people had it worse. But, like, it was bad enough that, like, I moved schools. Even though your mum was a teacher? So I moved to the school where my mum was a teacher. Did that make things harder? No, it actually made it so much easier because I've always been quite introverted. So I like lunch times and stuff. I'd just go in and have a cup of tea with her. I was proper like... Lona? Yeah, well, I had like a little group of friends, but we were all just like the strange people rather than like the popular ones. Where was mum and dad? Oh, they, they split up when I was like four, I think. And I had a stepdad... Um, and I think my dad cheated on my mum, to be fair, because after my stepmom died, she, like, my dad gave me all of her stuff and there was a diary. I don't, I don't know if that's, like, really bad, but I read it. And, um, yeah, it was all about, like, their relationship. And I was like, you were with my mum then, but, yeah. So how, see, when you go through the bullying and stuff mm. and then that. Because it's it's a weird connection with the porn stars I've interviewed and all the yeah. only fans get all there is that daddy can you understand the daddy yeah. connection? Like is that a thing? Do you see that? I don't know if I play on it a little bit, mm-hmm. to be honest. Um I feel like I'm quite a well rounded person, but there there obviously is some depth of uh not having the bucket filled in the right places. Do you know what I mean? I that that's a really bad yeah. metaphor, but like Obviously, the I think every single one of the males in my life were like not a good influence. How do you think that age. is? Uh, 
I don't know. I think my stepdad is now, but I had two brothers who are older than me and they were they were not very good. Like Joe and people say they have big brothers and it's like, oh, I won't mess with you then. Like mm. oh, my big brothers were, they, they were not it. Like they could not do anything. And, um, and yeah, like every, every other man I feel has just like let me down in some way. How does that affect you now? Um, I don't know. I think it definitely does affect the way I perceive men and work. I, I actually went through like a really difficult phase of thinking, I actually started therapy a few years ago because I, I thought is the whole reason that I do this job because I'm like so messed up that I think that it's morally okay and it's not. And I shouldn't actually want any of this. And like, it's not empowering. And like, I went through this whole massive thing and then I kind of like talked myself out of it and became okay with it again. Cause I was like, no, like I am proud of myself. But I think the initial fear of that was, was there. What was the main reason why you went to therapy? Um, it was, it was actually because, uh, at the start of lockdown, um, basically my family's like best friend's family. Like, so my family and this other family were like best friends. We grew up together. Um, they were like someone in their family sexually assaulted me from the time I was like seven years old for like 10 years and um they yeah <laughs> someone in their family basically just asked me outright and was like oh I found this like what's what's that about and I was like and obviously I'd not spoke to anyone about it for the whole of my life and um yeah, so that's the reason I started going because just out of this blue, this thing that I've been holding inside since I was like seven just randomly <laughs> came out. Who was that? Uh, it was a family friend. And it's for seven years old. How long did that last? Ten years. Yeah. Did you suppress all that? Hide from it? Yeah, I, I just completely ignored it. And we, I was like still friends with them because in my head, I was like, I was like, oh, well, if I say anything, no one's going to believe me. And uh, I actually, I had Stockholm syndrome for quite a while. So I just, I was just like, no, he just loves me. Like, this is just normal. And Joe, when like you're a kid and everyone goes, oh, I like your childhood sweethearts. It almost like encourages you that that behavior is normal, even though they don't know what's going on behind the scenes um and yeah it just got worse I guess until yeah. I got to a point I just don't you being groomed yeah how old was he he was a few years older um I think he was four years older than me you start a fucking pedophile yeah because so I case. I'm pretty sure his um his taste hasn't changed so I think as I think I'd actually be too old for him now like even though he's we've aged at the same time, I think he would still look at. What miles. sort of stuff was he doing? Oh, like the full mile. Yeah. From seven. Yeah, yeah. And nobody knew. Mm, no, no one knew. No, no one. Kind of family members. I mom. actually, I actually told my mum one time, but like she, um, she just went. Oh, I can't even remember what she said, but I think she just blew it off because she thought, oh, kids say funny things. Do you know what I mean? You don't, like, if your kid says that to you, like, you would take it seriously, but you don't expect them to even know what it is. I hadn't even had my sex education lesson yet. And you get your first one in year two. Like, I just, it just wasn't a thing in my head. Do you hold anything against your mum for that? I was angry at her for a long time, but I have a really good relationship with my mum so because I had a woman called Dela Wright amazing women six years old she was getting sexually abused mm. this guy was babysitting 
And again, it's that, whether it's the Stockholm syndrome or the grooming. Yeah. It's, it used to tell like, dance around all that shit and, and the telltale signs were there, but the mum and dad was non-existent. Yeah. But my daughter's never, she never has sleepovers. I'm very protective, man, because I've spoke to enough people to know how fucking dark it is out there. And I would not let my kids And that's a scary this. thing, man. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> so how do you get through that then? Like, has he ever been charged or is it just... I've never said it. Any, like, even since... Even since, uh, like, since that came out, I still, I've never been to the police. I can't get myself to go to the police. Like, and um, so I spent a while going, I was still family friends with them. And when, because it was his mum who asked me. And I was like, I was like, oh. And I didn't know what to say. I was in his house. I'd completely put it to the back of my mind and I was in his house and his mum just he was upstairs and his mum was like I found this and I was like like how did you find that because it was like messages from 2016 on an old Facebook account of him trying to message me and even like I don't want this stop it please and um yeah and I was like no you've been looking for something because like he's been accused of this before kind of thing um and yeah, I, like I found it really difficult. This was in lockdown one, the first year of it, that this all came out again. And um, I was I was going back to a house every week or so, hadn't told anyone else. And I was just saying, I just want him to get help. I want him to go to a therapist. I, like, I, I don't want to do anything. Like I'm, I, I think I was still scared that he wouldn't like me because like, I think that's how Stockholm syndrome works. And um, yeah, and then I kept asking to know how therapy was going just so that I could know that he was going because I was starting to have all these thoughts of he's just like allowed out on the streets and he's going to do it to other girls and who's going to do it to. And like I had a party once and all my friends who are my age at the time were in year eight would all like come up to me and be like oh he's just locked me in a bathroom he's been really creepy with me like who is he and I was like mm, I don't know and um yeah like it was just it, I was having like a lot of like very intrusive thoughts about it so I was like okay I can I need I need some answers and uh they started ignoring me I very much I've grown up with these people since I was like before I was born it was um my mum was friends with them years before I was born like they went to school together. It was a really odd situation. They started ignoring me, started ignoring my family. And then nine months later, I sent a message to both of the parents. And I was saying like, I just want to know what I did for you to uh, basically abandon me when I needed you. And they both blocked me. <laughs> yeah, it's bad, isn't it? What did the mum say when she found the messages? Um... Was she concerned for you or was she trying to hide stuff for, to she protect was, her son? She was concerned for me. I think you're always going to protect your child first. And she was always like, I see you like a daughter. And I was like, okay. But she's grooming you. She's manipulating you. Because what he needs is a fucking bullet to the head. Like, <laughs> there's no denying it. Like, if he's doing that to a seven-year-old yeah. kid, they're the worst kind of people on this mm -hmm. planet. There's no changing them. No. They need the fucking... They need the death penalty. They need uh. exposed because if he's doing it to you, who else is he doing it to? Exactly. And that's the thing. Like the whole, because for you to be abused at seven, be groomed and still mm. feel that, like you say, Stockholm syndrome, does he love me? Does he not love you? Yeah. You're seven. I know. He's not got the brain capacity to be thinking, even to yeah. my daughter's 12, they've not, I see them as a, as a baby. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's a hard thing to say that because I've, I've had plenty of survivors on who, I wouldn't say they blame themselves, but there's something in them where they still feel sorry for that person. Yeah. Do you still feel that connection? Like, would you put it all to the side if he was going to get help and just forgot about it? I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know what I feel. I th I don't think I've still, still numb fully, to it. Yeah, I think I, I've. It's still in the back of my mind, and I just like make a joke about it and I just forget about it. But like as it was going on, like I was in a very angry, like headspace because I just wanted I felt like no one listened to me for 10 years even when I was like constantly trying to tell people in my own little way and um yeah I remember one time she was like 
well, the only way that we're going to deal with, like, the, uh, with this is if you calm down and we act like adults. And I was like, but this is like 10 years of childhood he's took away from me. Like I can, I can be angry if I want to be. And like, I remember one time I went round and I said, um, this is before she spoke to him and it, he went to therapy. And I, I said, um, have you spoken to him? And she went, oh, I was going to, but he's, he's just got a girl that he really likes. And, and, you know, like, this is the happiest I've seen him in a while. I just can't bring myself to do it. And I was like, you're letting him see another girl. I was like, but you know what he's going to do? He's been accused of this before. You've had the police knock at your door. He's done this to another girl my age. Like, I know for a full fact, this is what he's like. Like, I don't understand why you're not listening. And I knew that she had found those messages because she, there, there was obviously something to happen for her to go on an old Facebook account to find messages from 2016. Like, that's just wrong. And, um, yeah, and when when she said, has this person, like, done anything to you? And I said, yeah. She went, oh, he's always had this problem. And I was like, well, if you know, like, why haven't you got him help or, I don't know, locked him up or something? Him. You no. can't fix that tendency. You no. can't fix that mindset. Like I said, death penalty. Yeah. Harm my kid, dead. In Russia, harm my kid, life sentence. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. Australia can't take their passport, take their driver license. Here, if they abuse kids, they can change their fucking identity for 15 quid. It's awful it's so bad and they're just allowed out yeah it's just they, they don't want their right lives to be ruined it's mm. like why like mm. they've done it to themselves i took drugs for years like but it was my choice drug yeah. dealers are doing 15 years 20 years yeah pedophiles are getting community service pedophiles are getting out and abusing more kids and still getting bail yeah. once twice three times like nobody has to get abused no drug dealers people want drugs they they, they want yeah. the drugs so they go and look for it i don't agree with drug dealers and all that shit now mm. but it's just the laws here are fucking rotten. Yeah. So see when you started talking about that and nobody listens, do you ever think in your mind, how old are you now? I'm 22. So still very young, so still, mm. still very new. Yeah. Something you'll probably need to deal with for the rest of your life. But yeah. speaking out about it, yeah, going forward, I try to press charges then give you the strength of what that does, give other people the strength to come forward. Like, yeah. Is he having sex with you at seven years old, eight years old? Mm. See, that's fucking sick, man. Yeah. Do you I know, know what I mean? And I, I was I was saying this to the uh to his mum and I was saying, you know, I like I Did she know the full story? Yeah. And I was saying, like, I, I think I need to go to the police about this and she went, Okay, well that's if they believe you. And I was like, Oh my god. I was like, no one's on my side. Like it was it was just a really odd situation. I think my mum was in denial about it for a long time. Um until they blocked me and like she fully realized the extent of the situation because it's a really difficult thing to say to your parents um and then yeah I went home for the first time in a while the other day and my stepbrother had apparently been invited around to theirs for dinner and I was like I was like in, in what world like is that okay obviously he said no but like how on earth is it still in their head to do that and it's like I yeah it's still really weird but like so when I visit up there I just go oh like I know where they live I just I drive past the house and then I'll be like oh, oh I can't believe they've got a new car like I can't believe they're just living as if it's just like a normal thing to them it's just really odd do you find it more difficult now though if you've done stripper if you're doing only fans then you lose the credibility to try and speak out like you say she'll call you a liar then you start doubting yourself and any confidence gets lower yeah do you find it more difficult because of the industry you're in as well not necessarily, but I think if it got to a point where I went to court about it and I think their lawyer, if, well, they probably would have a lawyer. I think they would say, oh, look at what she does. Like that's, that's the whole reason. Like this isn't like valid. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I do think it would, I think it's part of the reason like I haven't done anything about it. Cause I'm like, would they take me seriously? And also the last time it happened was like a good few years ago and like it, it isn't like a black and white case right it's not like you go oh I met this random man and he did this to me and then he just left me on the street like it's not like that it was like 10 years of we were still friends with them like it mm -hmm. was a family friend and like I've had the option to go to the police many times and I haven't like it's, it's a really complicated thing 
it's difficult for anybody to come forward yeah. and speak because what if they don't believe me what if what if what if you doubt yeah. yourself it's easy just to forget it but you can't forget yeah. it because the healing process is admitting there was an issue there yeah sophie anderson i had on porn star i love her to bits man mad as a box of frogs like nutcase but abused for 10 years old yeah selling herself for cigarettes and alcohol at 10 years old men abusing her in her mind she thinks it was normal in her mind she says oh but i enjoyed it i let it happen you don't because your brain's your brain's not fully that's what you're told is to normal understand one. that you're being groomed and i tried to say that on the podcast and i don't think she understood it i think she's been doing it for too long that she's mm. She just wants to forget about it. The yeah. porn and all the fucking sex that she does. And she says she slept with over 20,000 men. That's for me just a total escape for the girl. And, and you actually listen to her, man. She's such a good soul. Yeah. But you can see the, the, the brokenness. Yeah. When did you realise it was what was happening was wrong? Especially from a young age, if you've never been educated or don't know what's going yeah. on. Was there an, a time where you thought, this ain't right here? Um, I think it... it I think the guilt like always really got to me. I remember like in my head, it wasn't the R word. It was like, you know, we were just two people who loved each other and that's what he kept telling me. So I, I always just thought it was a normal thing, but the guilt that was there from like, from it happening, I was like, I shouldn't feel this bad. And I remember moving to my second house uh, my parents moved house when I was nine and I remember going there and looking at the house and going okay I'm allowed to lock on my door I'm not gonna let it happen here and like that I think that was like when I realized like it's not right and like I shouldn't have to think that as a nine-year-old for that to not happen and like yeah I I'm not sure I think it was just there was always something in my head that was like we shouldn't be doing this like this isn't this isn't okay but I wanted his approval that I did let it happen. How frequently would that happen? Oh, we we saw um we grew up together. Like my yeah. Like we would go home together every day after school. We would like we literally had our whole childhoods together. Our parents would like child mind all sets of kids if the other one was off. So we would see each other every day, if not every week. How, when did this end? Uh, when I was 17 was the last time it happened. Still recently? Yeah. So it's not as if like, a kid at 11, a kid at 12, or a, at 12 and 13, like, it's, no. it's okay, but if, if there's a five-year gap between kids and that, like, it's not right. No. Do you know what I mean? We've all been to schools when there's first year, second year, it like, happens, but it's a fucking baby, it's a child, six, yeah. seven, planting the seeds, he's 11, 12, like, and it's not it's just wrong in so yeah. many fucking levels well, there was there was gaps like do you know if he had a girlfriend i would like would you get jealous no i would feel safe mm. uh like if I, he had a girlfriend i would be like oh thank god like i could be in a room alone with him i know it's going to be fine and like it, it was like but as soon as i heard they'd broken up i was like oh, oh fuck like this is it again kind of thing and i knew that's when it was like a bit wrong because I was it felt like I was like searching for this validation but in the wrong way and I think that's when it got to me that I was like am I doing this for the wrong reasons and like now I do it in a way that I love it and I I, I think I can find happiness outside of it. it isn't my whole being is not only fans and searching for this validation off men I actually think it's like got to a point now where that validation to start with filled me up so much. I was like, oh, this is good. And then now it's like, uh, my standards are so much higher because like people are like paying to come on and say nice things to me. Like I don't need that from anyone. What I need is someone who can actually bonus my life in a good way. And like, I feel a lot more stable in the way that I view men now and how I view men interacting with me and I feel a lot better for that but yeah for a good like year or so I really struggled how was it talking about it at therapy oh god it was horrible it was like I like I, I still can't say like what it was do you know what I mean like I still can't say he did this to me like it because in my head I'm like I feel really guilty because I'm like I can't believe I'm accusing him of that 
where it's like, well, he did it, but it's just a really odd, odd thing. So how's your trust issues then? Like with men, especially in strip clubs, the only fans, like, you know yourself, the seediness and the darkness with men, yeah. it's fucked. They're creepy cunts, man. Like, you've yeah. got to be honest. Like, no matter if they're getting a fix, whatever, it's still, it's still quite creepy. That, yeah. Like, how do you then, well, how's your trust with men, women? Like, is it totally gone? Because you, uh, you seem quite level-headed as well. It's not yeah. as if you're not here and you're completely fucking broken. But yeah. it's, how do you learn to trust? How do you build bridges with people? Do um, you find it hard? I've actually, I've, I was actually fine with trusting people and I feel like I put too much trust into people. And like, uh, if someone came into my life and they were nice to me, I'd be like, oh my God, have everything, take whatever you want. Like, I just want you to love me kind of thing. Whether it was a girl, a friend, a like a man, whatever. And I think especially recently, that's kind of like gone to shit. Like I think everyone who... I've had a friendship with like has because of my only fans obviously like you you have money and people know that I don't know if it's the money I don't think I don't know if it's me being like too nice but like it has kind of gone bad like everyone's kind of used in some way yeah like that. that's where the damage comes in yeah. everybody's always constantly using you want a piece yeah. of something just Everybody's full of shit. Exactly. The best way to describe it is that we all talk shit. I talk yeah. shit. You talk shit. Like we just kind of like we spoke earlier. But like, we don't know what the fuck's going on. No. We just what it's all about. Like, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How long did you do the stripping for? Uh, only a few months. I was like freshly eighteen, and now it's like so fucked up to me. Like eighteen's a baby. I can't believe eighteen year olds are allowed to do that. Like I was so young, and I earned the most in the strip club that I was working in um and i'm pretty sure it was because i was young and that's like disgusting to me um but i don't quite know if the same things that i found empowering then are still empowering now it's like i don't think if only fans went to shit tomorrow i don't think i could ever go back to stripping i don't think i could go back to coming because i don't think i could have men watching me that predatory like um and I think in stripping, especially, I don't know what it's like in the US. I think it's a bit a bit better in the US because like you can you can dance on a pole, you'll get loads of money. In England, you get it purely from private dances. And um yeah, it was just very odd place to be when you're that young. I had quite a lot of jobs growing up. Like I always wanted to work. I always wanted money. I had three jobs when I was uh, 17 and a college. I was fine when I was working. But then when I was in uni and I stopped to be a stripper and then a camera, I think it was just a really odd place to be because then you, you've seen as an 18 year old, your body can get you money. Like you you can like you have something as a woman that men will look at and give you money for and you've also seen how easy it is to make money so then from that I literally like I had a boyfriend at the time and I was like well I can't I can't go back like I need to do something to to make this much money or more money did you lose yourself I don't think I did then I was like I was very smart as soon as I earned my first like 10K, I got a financial advisor. I put money for a pension. Like I I bought a house outright. Like I, I had I had like a, a, a normal car. Like I, it was fine. Um, and I, I just had like, had like a nice little normal life. Like it was just like, it, it was, it was like a very simple life. And because I didn't grow up like mega rich, I grew up comfortable. We never went without anything, but it wasn't like we had loads of money to spare. Um, I always had it in my head that I couldn't afford things. So like, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to cook. I can't afford a Chinese, right? But like, I did have money. And then I think it was, so I only moved to Essex in May last year. And um, I moved into a seven bed house by myself. And I think this year has just like done me in a bit because I was like, what? Like, I would be so much happier living in my tiny little house up north 
in a council estate than I am now just because when you have nothing to work towards when you have nothing that is uh when you can't find contentment in everyday life like that's when you do lose yourself it's funny then why do we do it then yeah i don't do you feel as if getting the big house or, or whatever it is do you feel as if that's to try and heal the broken pieces it was it was actually to move closer to someone that i was working with male or female uh female and then that went to shit as well. And then I was just kind of there. I didn't have, I didn't know anyone. I, in this job, you work from home. And it's quite lonely. Like you, you don't go out. You just, you sit in your house. Like it's quite, it's a nice job. And it's like fairly easy. Don't get me wrong. But like you, there's, it's not like you go to work and you meet people and you make friends. Like everyone in this industry, I bet as you've met, it's like, a little bit fake so you can meet someone you can be your best friend you go home they'll never speak to you again like it's just a bit odd what i've gathered is it must damage you mentally somewhere yeah now we can all portray it and oh i'm i'm a businesswoman i'm a businessman i'm doing this yeah even the male porn stars their heads are gone yeah and, uh, i've got a couple of good friends man one does the gay porn he says he's straight he's also a, a bare knuckle world champion like i'm never going to yeah. disagree with him man because they can fucking scrap but it's just it, it must do something yeah. to your psyche no matter what it is, like even all the drugs I drink and drink, it must do something to your brain. It's a, yeah. a total escape for reality. I, what life is, I just don't know. But see, when you started making money in that, did you ever feel, have you ever, are you ever ha happy? Your videos, you seem happy, but when the, the cameras are off, do mm. you, are you happy? Um, I was happier a year ago, like living back up north and like in a little house and like surrounded by the good people like who I've been friends with since before I had money I think since I moved it's it's mainly friends that I have now because like since I've met doing what I do and then when you start a friendship or a relationship like that it's that that is already set there they don't know you before you've had money they don't care about you before you've had money um but I think it 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 does damage you in some way I don't know what way that is I'll probably find out when I'm 50 but like I don't think it's the most sane job to be in, but then surely it's damaging in some way to do the same thing every week through and through until you're 54 and you're not allowed to quit because you've not got enough in your pension yet. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you ever get scared you get caught up in it though? Yeah, but I think I'm, mm, I'm, I'm fairly good at like understanding when I need to take a break and when I need to take a step back and like ground myself a bit. And I, I am quite good at doing that, but I think, um, I think it does get to a point where like it all gets so addicting that it's like, I don't know, like you'll, you'll see the money that you make and you're like, oh, that's really bad. Need to make more. And then you'll push your boundaries a little bit to make more. And then you'll make more and you'll be like, okay, well we've done that now. Like, we know we can do that, so we need to do it again. And then if it goes below that, it's like almost your your value is linked to the money you're worth. Mm -hmm. So I think that's quite damaging. That's it, as people value people and how many followers they have. Yeah. I know people with not got social media on the best people on the planet. Yeah, exactly. I know people with five million followers and they're fucking absolute wankers. Do you know, I have dated people in the public eye, right? I vowed never to date someone who has a social media presence ever again because they're not sane they're not normal like they think that they're, they're like god or something yeah it's so fake man like yeah all of the people that i've met like youtubers like everyone wants to be in the youtube industry it's really odd industry to be in like the people are just a bit <laughs> odd <laughs> <laughs> They are. Yeah. It's anybody with social media, you, you kind of got to be psychotic to be on it. Yeah. We don't know the damage that phones are going to do to us in 10 years. We're the guinea pigs. Yeah. It says they used to do adverts with doctors smoking 50 years ago saying it was good for you. Literally. Because I can see my pinky and stuff bending down with holding my I phone. Know. And it's just that the, the, the technology and information that your brain's yeah. absorbing, our brain spans are, are smaller than a goldfish now that we're not yeah. concentrating <laughs> I, long enough. I even find it like even if i walk downstairs to go and get something and walk back up i'll take my phone and then be like why the fuck have i taken that yeah. it's really odd and it's like i especially recently have got into a, a situation where i've been like okay i'm not happy at the moment i need to just put my phone to the side for a few hours and do what i enjoy 
And then the anxiety about leaving my phone, because if I open my phone and I get back and there's something bad in it, in my head, it's almost like I've done this thing that I enjoy. So there's something bad that's gone on on my phone that I've got a bad message that something's happened or whatever. And it's like, it's really odd little like mindset to be in is like your phone controls your whole life yeah it does mm. it is well life like i used to go to the 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 matches in london for people with all the lockdown shit and everything yeah. was going on and i used to look around the people used to be the boards or oh, be free and open your mind but they're smoking joints they're drinking they're recording on a phone yeah. they're so far from free it's unbelievable trying to yeah. stop going so what's your relationship with your dad like now did once he broke up did he just disappear no so um we actually we lived in a community house for a little bit so me him and my brother all shared a bed and a room for like a few years um he moved in he found my stepmom my stepmom lived there too and there was like 14 people in this house and it was fantastic it was actually the best time ever um and then they bought a house and we moved in and it was it was nice. Like he was, he was a good dad. I think it was, it was only when my stepmom got cancer that, that he stopped being as nice. He was always a bit of a dickhead, but like he was, he was like fairly good. How, what, did your stepmom passed away? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. She, she, um. Were you close? Yeah. Yeah. We were really close. Um. Feel protected with her? Safe? Yeah. Yeah. She was, she was, she never had kids. So we were her kids. Um, and she, uh, yeah, she got cancer when I was 14, I think. And um, maybe I was 13. And she was actually okay for a little bit. Um, but we just kept coming home. My dad would pick me up from school and we'd get home and she would like be on the floor. She would have fainted or... Um, yeah, she she was quite poorly. Um, and like there was a few times she like passed out because she had a brain tumor so there's a few times she passed out in like really unfortunate circumstances like you know into a pond or something and nearly drowned but she she was fine she had a like brain surgery and then um yeah she came came home for a while i um i left because my dad was like he was just not happy me and my dad were not getting along it was the time period where as a girl, you start forming opinions and men apparently don't like that. So I I got to the point where I had to leave. Um, my stepmom as well, she was on chemo and radiation. So I don't know if you've ever known anyone. Yeah, my dad passed away with like chemo. Uh, they, they get quite, not mean, but like their temper is like very short when you, they're not going to be happy. Yeah, right? they're dying. I feel as if anybody in their deathbed always know they could have gave more. Exactly. My dad was dying, but I should have been the man. I should have been the one who took the reins and made sure everything was okay. Instead, I went the other way. I went angry. I filled myself with drink, drugs and violence because I was angry at not showing my yeah. dad that, that, how successful I could have been. He always seen that I had something. Yeah. So when he goes and he sees your worst, your kid, your worst, before they die that also plays in your mind so yeah. when they're, they're going to be angry as well yeah do you know what i mean it's such a difficult thing getting told that three months or six months and no matter how tumors start or cancer start we can yeah. go around the conspiracy route and shit as well with that but did you did that affect you with seeing yeah. somebody you loved going through everything you've been through for the last seven years as well that yeah. did you ever tell her what was going on no never told anyone I, like I, I was very close to my mum like mm. most of all and I never told her it's like I felt embarrassed like even when I told them after it came out I was like mm. um but yeah so I I actually ended up moving out I left me and my dad had a really big argument and I just moved out I went to my mum's and um yeah I didn't really speak to her again because I don't know if this is true but I've been told that my dad told her not to speak to me I I don't know what's true and what isn't I don't want to accuse them of something that isn't true but then um my family all came over from America and they like we were going to go for like a carvery and um I was going to go with my brother and it would have been the first time I saw my dad in a while and they um he like he called up and he was like oh, I'm really excited to see her like we've, it's been so long and um 
he went oh who invited her and I said oh my cousin and he was like he was like oh so he invited you like it wasn't from my invitation that you came and I was like oh I didn't know you invited me and he just flipped and he was like well none of them want anything to do with you like do you have no rights to see your family then like not on a side that you speak to anymore it was really odd about it and then told us the wrong address so we turned up at the wrong address and then turned up there and then he came out and was like oh it's so nice to see you like I'm so happy you're here and I was like this is really confusing and that was actually the last time I saw my stepmom. and then she was in a coma for three months so she I didn't find out what happened after um yeah until after and the day I found out my boyfriend actually cheated on me as well it was a horrific time so he called me up and he was like hey how are you and I was like I've not spoken to this man in like a year and I was like good thanks how are you and you went yeah good oh actually no I'm not um Susie's dead and I was like oh my god like it was just such a like a shock and I actually went to school the next day just like pretend it didn't happen and my friend who knew my family came up and was like oh my god I'm so sorry like I heard and then from then on I didn't go to school for like six months mm -hmm. so I was just like it's just it's a very odd thing but she um because she had a brain tumor she kept f fainting and she was smoking when my dad was asleep and she set herself on fire and then was in a coma for three months she had to have like 50 percent skin grafts and um yeah her throat collapsed basically Fuck sake. so she had a brain tumor fell asleep smoking and burnt herself as well yeah yeah it was really bad but again as a 14 year old kid your dad should it be kicking out did your dad does he ever know what happened to you as a kid now no no idea um why was you so angry towards you i think because i reminded him of my mum i don't think he liked my mum very much and i really reminded i'm very similar to my mum we have a lot of opinions very strong-headed don't think some men like that yeah but you need to be in this, this day and age exactly like, or else you would not get through the shit that you've went through exactly yeah so how does only fans are your biggest money maker huh? yeah yeah so how does that start how do you go from stripping and then to yeah. only fans did so when I was camming, obviously it was like an internet thing and a lot of cameras like have only only fans on the side just so they can have a bit of an extra income. Mm. And um I actually had some people contact me and they were like, We can make you the next big thing. And th they did, to be fair. I mean, like there was a lot of bad things that came with that, but they Like what? They were very much like, We made you, we like we own you kind of vibe. Um and I didn't realize, but when I was 20, I actually signed a contract that said, like, not only do I have to carry on doing what I'm doing, but if I stop, they can basically force me to carry on what I'm doing or pay as much as they think that I will earn to get out of the contract. Very odd. Yeah. So it was like kind Did of... Did you look at the contract before you signed that? I got someone to look over it as well, like a lawyer. And they were like, yeah, it's a bit of a shit contract, but like go for it but I didn't realize I was tied in for like six years it was very very bad but I think that was just another thing where I thought oh my god this group of boys is like amazing and it was just another and it it seems to keep happening I'm, I'm fully by myself now I don't have anyone helping me um just got a few really good friends um but yeah but very gullible yeah I think very naive as well at the time I think I'm a lot better now but you're always looking for somebody to save you yeah, a little bit. Probably probably the daddy issues. Yeah, but every time you, you just got to keep your guard up. Yeah. And that's the sad reality. Is every, yeah. Like, I struggle with trust, and rightly fucking so, because every yeah. time I'm right anyway. So I just fly solo, do my own thing, and nobody can get hurt. And yeah. I, I don't get hurt. Yeah. Simple as that. Like, it's not like, be protective. Oh, you've got to let people in. Fuck everybody else. Yeah. I'm 39, man. I don't need anybody else. I'm, I'm doing all right. Like, no, I it's understand. Just, I've been through it you're still fucking yeah. young but you've been through enough now to go okay wait a minute i need to question that yeah because everybody's nice everybody can come off and speak you off mm -hmm. sometimes people come in and I think, ah, and then i remember yeah wait a minute like, and i think this as well you know because i would never do it yeah. i just expect that they would never do it because why would they <laughs> no so nah, stupid you can't think that way now because everything out there's numbers and money yeah and that's I, all it is it's such a weird position to be in at like 22 and like have what i have and then, cause I'm like, I'm, I feel like I'm also like 
over generous so if someone goes oh I'm having a really hard time I'm like oh my god I'm so sorry like here's loads of money and it's just fucking stupid like it's still nice to be nice it's still nice to be generous mm. because if somebody's going to fuck you over then do you know what that is what it is but yeah you still got to keep your cards close to your chest you've still got to play the game yeah life's just a game of chess yeah how do you 100%. play the moves man you got to you got to, you got to be in control i'm a control yeah. freak yeah I, 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 i'm fully in control because I, I know i've lived life long enough to know how to play the game yeah and that's all it is a game it's all bullshit like as yeah. long as you, and when everything the cameras are off and then you can still smile from time to time and enjoy yeah. the final things in life then you're winning yeah doesn't matter if it's a seven bedroom gaff in essex or a fucking tent and yeah the middle of england like you can be happy anywhere yeah it's everything's to do with this like yeah so see when you started only fans like when you talk about people wanting to say mm-hmm. we can make you this make you that like how's how did they take 50 percent, or how does it work did they take 20 percent? like yeah so uh, I've had I've had some people take fifty percent. I've had some people take twenty percent. Yeah, very like a, like a pimp. Not quite. So like it's not. It's more like strategy about this is like maybe how to do YouTube. This is how I would do like different social media so that we can bring people to OnlyFans. So it's it's a bit different. So like a social media manager almost rather mm. than a pimp. Um, and like I think another thing. Like with a pimp, they, it's usually, they'll go, you work on this, like you do this. And yeah, like I don't do anything with any other like guys. Like I know some girls do stuff with like a bunch of guys. Like there's, there's none of that. Um, So I, I wouldn't quite call it pimping, but I think some of the people got like too invested in like we own you kind of thing do you know what I mean like uh yeah very I think they get like almost this god complex from it that's fucking weird yeah yeah pimp can be it's not just somebody with a fur coat and it's got fucking girls standing at the street corner yeah selling themselves pimps can be somebody working mcdonald's can be pimps yeah people working for minimum wage where they're making fucking billions each year like yeah there's levels of it for big corporations to anything from there's just different levels of the pimp giving yeah. eyes anyway i've interviewed andrew tate and he says it as well that he's not a even though he's a small pimp compared to mm. some of the bigger companies who've got thousands of fucking workers earning yeah. minimum wage you've got kids in india making night trainers but they'll sell them here for 300 400 quid like, yeah they're fucking the top pimps yeah what i mean but so how when did you start try to because you're still fucking young let's be honest like, you're still yeah. a baby man like how did you, when did you start to understand that wait a minute i'm getting used here if somebody comes in but and, and helps your career mm-hmm. and they've boosted it and they have genuinely helped it by all means they still deserve credit yeah. they still deserve a percentage 100%. sometimes what happens is people get too big for their boots and wait a minute i don't need them anymore and cut them off yeah. so potentially you could have been the yeah. bad side because if they've helped you and says everything they're going to do but yet you're thinking no because the pound signs yeah no matter if you're sitting here all innocent and sweet it's, yeah we're still fucking greedy yeah greedy. everyone's greedy yeah, do you know what i mean are. we always want more because if we don't earn enough we think oh there's no delivers yeah. anymore i need to work harder so in that relationship if somebody's built you up as well you've still got to be careful who's in the right or wrong yeah it's your career of course you'd be all means you want to make as much as possible yeah. you've got boxers now who are making all the money yeah yeah they only get 20 percent yeah so did you when did you realize okay i can make more myself um it got to a point where uh i think i think management companies in general just get greedy i think if they have one amazing situation right so like i you get it went to the blue moon you can have the only fans is saturated with girls now every girl has gone oh my god it's okay to do that great easy way to make money and only one in 50 will be big right and it happened that I was one of them people who luckily got big very quickly. And um, and I think they then just went, oh, we want 50 girls. And they were getting like eight different girls on a week. And they were all saying, you can work with Emily Black. You can do this. You can do that. And I was like, I want like, what does this give to me? Like, you're not, you're not putting me first anymore. I'm sorry. And um, they... Yeah, it just got to a point where I was saying like, I want to do more. I want to do this. I want to do this. And they were like, if I said, I'm really not comfortable doing that, they would go, 
Mm, I really think you have to think about the implications of that then. You're not going to make any money. And like, it just got to a point I didn't trust them. It wasn't comfortable. Um, and when you're saying to someone like, maybe you want to change the direction, like, and it's not supportive, I think it's all just a little bit, you start thinking you've not got my best interests at heart. Like you, you see the dollar signs, but I'm not earning as much as I could be. Or like I'm not reaching my full potential and you're okay with that just because you're now getting it from how many other girls? Yeah, you're being used. They are yeah. pimps. Yeah. They are. When you yeah. break it all down, they're telling people what to do, yeah. what to wear. Scenes to, they're, telling, they're calling the shots. They're not got your best interest no. for you to make more money. They're pretending to make you more money yeah. so they get the money like that's yeah. the way i see it that's the way the business game works it's all it's all scams it's all yeah. bullshit it's all lights it's all manipulation yeah. everything's bullshit exactly. everybody's got podcasts now yeah. i look at podcasts they've all got my fucking the majority of all got my previous guests and that's all right something yeah can be flattering but yeah and it's just you're thinking like in life man you be who you want to be yeah but fly solo man like be unique yeah if you ain't going to be unique you ain't going to fucking get anywhere because people exactly. see right through that but if you're getting manipulated and go through all this shit, losing your stepmom, groomed as a fucking kid, your dad being a prick, mm -hmm. let's be honest, that like, when you're still only 22, like, how does it then affect you with anything you're doing in life? Or can you actually just try and get on with it? I think a lot of the time I do just try and get on with it. But like, I think it's always going to be there. Um, I think like, you can't ever like push it to the side or push it to the back of your head. Like it's, I think it's one of them things like you're absolutely fine and then the one minute you're not the whole world comes caving in do you know what I mean and like I'm I think it was like in November I had to have a month off because I was just like I just can't like I don't understand what's making me happy I don't think I am content at the moment I just need I need to figure out what is like me and like if what I'm doing on social media is what I want to be doing because in this day and age everyone is doing the same thing especially only fans girls you look on youtube everyone's doing a try and haul everyone's doing spin the wheel like you look on, spin the wheel so you spin the wheel there's like little forfeits on it and you're like you're like twerk or bounce or like you do something and you spin it and go oh bounce and you sit there and bounce it'll get hundreds of thousands of views but like is it what makes you enjoyable and like with only fans right the one thing that makes it big out of everything that makes people stay on there is if they go oh my god I'm in love with you like you as a person it's like yeah fair enough if they go oh you're really fit you look like you've got good tits they'll subscribe but like that's not going to keep them on that's not going to make them fall in love with you you've got to have like a whole persona where they like they genuinely like you for them to want to subscribe and to stay there and to be an actual follower not just I want to wank every now and then, right? It's still so, fucking creepy though, isn't it? Like, yeah. You think about all the porn sites, like 80% of stuff online in porn is abuse. Yeah. Has girls been abused? Yeah. Pornhub's putting fucking kids on. Like, it's that's a website fun. that should be shut down. Like, mm. It's unbelievable the method of thinking and with the perverted mind and listen, I've been a man, I've been a fucking bit of a boy back yeah. in the day that like, understood it. Yeah. But now I understand what I put in here, what can affect it, watching porn and stuff, it darkens it, amygdala, yeah. makes you depressed. Like all these men are struggling and you've been the therapist 22, you've got, old, what's the oldest man that's on your OnlyFans? I don't know. How would you say the oldest man is that's on my OnlyFans? What? Oldest man that's on my OnlyFans? Um, late 50s? Early 60s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you say when, if it's an old man on your yeah. OnlyFans, like, what kind of conversations get struck up? God, it can be anything from like, from, oh my God, I had this, I don't, I don't know if I can say it because it's probably going to watch it, but I had this guy who like, basically messed me and he was like, you've, you've cheated on me. And I was like, I was like, what? And he was like, you've cheated on me. I can't believe you've done this. And I was like, I was like, hang on, hang on, what? And he was like, oh, and I was like, oh, haha. And he was like, he was like, this isn't funny. Like, he, how are you going to explain this? And I was like, oh my God. I was like, fuck, like, this is bad. Like, we're not, we're, we're not together. Like, I can't be with you. And like, it's, it's also some people like message and be like, okay, so how much for a meetup? And I'm like, 
this is an online like no just that's not like I'll be here to fulfill you whatever needs you want but like there's there's no crossover of boundaries it's it can be very odd um but <laughs> yeah but like then sometimes people be like so you won't sleep with me for a grand i'm like fuck like and i think it's got to the point as well someone could offer me anything and money doesn't have the same value anymore do you know when i was 18 i was so sad that i didn't sell my virginity right how fucked up is that because i heard that someone someone sold their virginity for three million i was like if I just did that, I would be fine. Now I'm like, if someone offered me three million to have sex with me, I'd be like, Ugh, no, fuck off. Like, there's not enough money in the world. Money does nothing. Like, money gives you freedom, and I'm really lucky to have that freedom. And I'm in a really beneficial situation where I don't have to worry about money. But like, what does it give you? Like, what is it going to buy you that's actually going to make you happy? What's the most you've rejected? Oh. I don't even know. Probably not that much. Have you ever been offered to go to Dubai? Not for the, the port of party situation. Nah, that I've never been offered. Are you sure? That. Is that all that shit and all the stuff that they do over there? Oh yeah, I believe that hundred percent. Yeah, I've, 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 and people have told me, man, and and all these girls think they're big balling on their Instagram blue tick, and they've <laughs> just been fucking shat on. <laughs> oh, the thing is, as well, they don't just shit on you; like they they beat you. They like they have such perverted like fetishes that they will like do whatever to you and then they'll be like, here's 20 grand, make it better. That could fuck you up for life. Like I oh, I think I think this is a whole thing. Like I don't at this point, I don't want to damage myself anymore. And if someone does the slightest thing wrong in my life, I'm like, you're out, bye. Like I don't want to know you anymore. And yeah, you've got to protect yourself. Yeah, because what is did you join OnlyFans? Mm, 20 i think so still recently new yeah what was it like from what's the difference from only fans and webcamming um it's a lot safer um webcamming i got very addicted to the money very quickly uh so i knew if i was just sat there talking people would just send money for no reason like just just for you sat there you didn't have to be naked you didn't have to say anything like they'll just send you money and it was like it was it was nice and i it would get to a point i would earn a grand a night and i would refuse to get off until i earn a grand like um yeah it was it was just like um i would i i think at one point i spent three months like eight hours a day without a break i wouldn't see anyone if i went to see someone be like i can stop for a cup of tea but i need to go home and work and they're like why and i was like shut up like let me make money because it was the first time in my life i'd ever had like that amount of money and i knew that it was possible to get that amount of money that i was like life just got made so much easier all them times where i was like I think when I moved into the house that I was first coming in, I really had to work out, okay, if my friend drops out, I have to pay 10 grand for the whole year. I have to somehow make that work. And then I found out I could make that in 10 days. Like I was like, what the fuck? Like it's like a life hack, but it's, it is kind of damaging at the same time. So why is OnlyFans safer than webcams are not the same? Oh, uh, I, um, I don't know how people do it, but they can like, track your face or something i got like someone messaging me they could took a picture of my house right and they sent it to me and they were like i know you're inside and i was like what the fuck i was like sorry i also i had a boyfriend at one point and when we broke up um i had like someone text me being like just be very careful your ex-boyfriend is saying that um he will let people into your house for 20 pounds to just like do whatever to you. And I was like, I was, I was like, what the fuck? That's why I had to kind of move out of that town. Cause it was like so unsafe. Um, and with only fans, one, you can do it from wherever. So I could put a picture up at home and people are like, Oh my God, she's at home now. They don't know where I live. 
and then I'm actually here. Like it's behind a barrier where you're not live. People can't see what you're doing right now, where you are right now. Like it's, it it is a lot safer than, than camming and camming is a lot safer than stripping. So you've just been doing OnlyFans for over two years. See when you start building up the subscriptions, like, yeah. how's that feeling? Like, is that an, an excitement when the money's coming in or do you still feel, hmm, that's not enough? Uh, it was, it was the start with, it was really exciting to start with. I got like really excited when I hit like 66 subs. I was like, oh my God, look, I'm famous. Like, what the hell? And then now it's, um, I don't, I don't think anything from that side will like ever be enough like you're constantly chasing more but I think like just what you were saying before we sat down I was like the power of now like you have got to be present like as long as I invest wisely then it's always going to be enough like you just have to find happiness in other places that aren't work to then see it as just a business but I just think because it's such a personal business like it's someone seeing you at your most vulnerable state like that's what makes it so uh personal what's a normal day like on only fans for you what do you mean like is it planned when you wake up in the morning like what's your daily routine like with it um i so i have like a plan every day of what i'm doing on like all social media so like say one day i'll film loads of tiktoks and then like post like three or four a day from then on out uh, I've got my professional TikTok as well, where I'll do the same thing on there. Um, on OnlyFans, it's like I have, so you have like extra videos. So they, they sign up, they pay a fee, and then there's a certain amount of stuff on the wall that they can just see for free. They can message you for free, like, um, and then they can also buy like, more explicit content, right? And that's where like the more money is. And, um, yeah, like, so I try to send out one of them a day. I don't necessarily film a new one of them every day, like maybe once a week. Um, and then that's basically it. A lot of it isn't planned. I'll, I'll maybe take like bulk content. So like a bunch of different lingeries. Sometimes I'll be out and traveling. I'll just take a few cute pictures and then like post them. Like it's like really like quite easy stuff what sort of stuff is it different levels of people who subscribe like different things that they get like videos no. stuff like that and it's all you who does it yourself yeah so there's no male female and all a lot of girls have sex with men sex with women they do fucking no. mad, all the mad stuff no so how did you build up a successful only fans by just you um is that with tiktok youtube does all that stuff yeah then help? yeah and uh yeah i just I kind of have to think, right, so when I very first started out, like a bunch of stuff got, like my auntie actually sent like a bunch of stuff to my stepdad. And I was like, ooh. So I've got to be really careful. I've got to think that's the worst case situation, right? What is, what would I die if they got to send it? So I just wouldn't do anything that would be like detrimental to myself in that situation everything else i'm like they know what i do like it's fine like the, they've seen the worst of it it's all good now so like um but yeah it's just i don't know how i got successful just doing like solo stuff there is stuff like with other girls on there for example but it's not like crazy shit like yeah hardcore yeah it's just it's uh it's like we'll be doing stuff but like next to each other or like do you know what i mean it's not it's not like we're full-on finger blasting each other or something some of them are fucking nuts on it i had a girl i can't mm -hmm. remember her name a couple of weeks ago only fans and she's got big tits and she's but they, they go full steam ahead yeah. man like yeah. there's no fucking about that i subscribe to a few girls because like it's really good to see what other people are doing like if your con content is getting like you know <laughs> like the same samey same hmm. and i've subscribed to a few girls and sometimes i'll see what they post and i'm like fuck like mm -hmm. you're bold but but they're doing it for the money this is what i'm saying where you can lose yourself then when mm. do you completely destroy your mental sanity for for money yeah do you know what i mean like how many men do you speak to a day oh i'd say i get a good few hundred messages a day but i'll just send and you have to reply 
Yeah. Engagement's like really, really good to have on there. If you lose all your engagement, people are going to stop interacting with you and that's where you keep people. Do you ever get anybody getting angry that you don't reply? <laughs> reply? Sometimes, but I'll only not reply if something <laughs> really weird. Like, <laughs> God, I, you do get some odd people on there. Usually everyone's fine. It's like really normal things or like, they'll be like, oh, I have this weird fetish, like feet. And it's like, oh, that's a normal one. That's fine. Yeah, is that, Why is the feet thing normalized now? I have no idea, but apparently I have nice feet. So it's working for me. It's going great. What is that with the feet thing? No, I, I don't get it. I don't know. It's not something you look at and go, ah, nice feet. Apparently people do though. And it's fucking weird. And I don't think... There's, there's weird ones. It, yeah. Absolutely there is a lot. Do you know, I had someone... I don't think they're going to watch this. I don't know what's okay and what's not. But he was like, he wanted a custom video. And they're like the most expensive thing you can buy, right? Because it's a custom video. And he was like, can you please like take your retainers out? And I was like, yeah. like, And he was like, yeah, that's it. Just take your retainers out. I was like, okay. <laughs> Short sure thing. No, I've, I've literally got loads of pictures on my phone of me. Like take like with my retainers out and just put a slobber on it. How much did they pay for that? Uh, that one was three hundred dollars for one minute. Three hundred quid? Are you pulling a retainer? I need to get myself on OnlyFans, <laughs> fuck's sake. Because I had who was it? I had on had the webcam business. <clears throat> yeah. And the girls and the guy was paying her to eat jelly babies and pretend it was him, but keep the last jelly baby and pretend it, it, and yeah. it was sitting having a wank like it is. It is disturbed shit. I've and who did I have on? It was Elbrook actually. She was on and she was, people were pretending their brother and sister and that, some incest shit. And the girl I had on a couple of weeks ago, with, she was, the guy was in like a, a kid's room and that, like there's some, there is some darkness there. Like, yeah. Like, why do you think people are paying for OnlyFans? Like, if, it, if porn's free out there, like what's, the, what's such, the, what's the turn on about it? Obviously it's the girl next door kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I think, I, I think that's it. my whole vibe as well. Like I think, so you've got to imagine, right? It's not it's not the same as porn's free. Why don't you just go have a wank? It's a whole relationship to some people. Like if you think if you're the loneliest you've ever been and you get home and you can just go, oh, no one's excited to talk to me. Well, like I am. Like you can sit and like message me and then you'll get a reply really quickly and I'm on constantly and I've just be sat there like typing away. Do you know what I mean? And then not only that, but you could have a sexual relationship with this person where they're sending you live videos, where they're sexting you. like, And not only that, right? It's not just this random person. The whole thing about social media and doing OnlyFans is you kind of, you're like this celebrity in people's heads. Imagine you're like number one celebrity in your head, right? Say if, if your like mad crush is Megan Fox, and Megan Fox makes an OnlyFans and you get to go on there and have a relationship with her and like speak to her every night. And not only that, but she wants you and like she's sending you videos of what she's doing. It makes it a lot different to just, oh, I'll go on Pornhub and yeah. just have a wank. Like it's this it's this whole... I understand it, but, yeah. it, but it's fake, isn't it? You're not going to say that because of the want to lose subscribers, but... My method, I think, and obviously, maybe 10 years ago, obviously you go, I don't know, t t testosterone and that's dropped a bit, but I just, the method of thinking and the seediness mm. and the perverted fucking ways, male and female. Yeah. Like, there's everything, even with sex, is a sexual energy exchange. Like yeah. I started looking into the soul and all that shit and I go way deep to understand how can I improve, how is this semen retention, like it's all fucking weird shit that yeah. I look into, but... There's something in it, the energy exchange, there's yeah. something in the connection. Like even when I look at every porn star, their eyes, it's their eyes, I see yeah. them, there's nothing really behind them, if yeah. you know what I mean. And and that's the scary thing, like if you're only doing it solo, but do you ever get scared that you could be tempted that you go, listen, there's five million quid. It happens, like, if I, I know you can shake your head, but you've already came this far by doing what you've done. Yeah. There's always temptation yeah, there. No, okay, 100%. I can retire, but think before you know it. But I think, not. I think the difference is if you'd have said that to me, if you go five million quid on the table right now, you film like a full on sex tape with three guys and you do this, I'd have gone fucking give it to me. <laughs> right now, I think it's got to a point where it's like, okay, I feel like I've gotten to like 
where I'm doing incredibly well. If I saw myself a few years ago now, I would go, I can't believe I'm there. Like that is mental. I was on like, what, 12 grand a year a few years ago. And like now I'm here and money has a different value in my head to what it did. It's not if I just have money, it'll fix everything. The grass is never greener on the other side. Like the grass is green now and you need to like have that as it is. And you need to do things, you need to do things that actually empower you rather than just like thinking that if you just do that, you'll be happier. If you just do this, you'll be happier. Like you're not, you need to make yourself happy now. And if you're not happy now, either like something needs to change or you need to get yourself to a point where you are content because like, the the money is is never going to fix things. What's the worst thing you've seen doing OnlyFans? Oh God, what haven't I seen? Did you see man? He messaged me. <laughs> 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 I'll show you after this. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> you got my phone. Yes. I can show you. Yeah. What happened? He found me off of your Instagram. Oh no! Yeah. So I bet he loves that I show this to everyone. <laughs> I. I did it on ITV as well. So what was that? What's the worst thing you've seen? So this is, might not be the worst thing I've seen, but it's definitely the funniest. And um, this guy basically sent me... He, on Instagram, right? He didn't even pay to send me this. Ew. And he like messaged me and he was like, he was like, hi, I just, I just want, um, uh, I just want you to laugh at me. <sighs> And he's basically made Disney characters and then put his micro penis as their nose. But the drawings are actually fairly good, which makes it even worse. What, oh so he, dra God. he draws around his bobby just as Disney characters? Hang on, hang on. I, <laughs> can I need to get him on the podcast. Mickey Mouse dick. On honestly. But he... Oh, no, I'm going to be so... Oh, here we go. Okay. So... And he's he's given like a label at the bottom. So this is Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> How small is he? Oh, Baker, man. Do you want me to show you his actual? Looks like a wee first? pig. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little butthole. So then let me show you his actual. How small is he? Baker, but yeah. it's like a. Oh, but there's this is the potato head yeah, guy. Sure. <laughs> Sketch. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So he draws me pictures and puts his pecker through his nose. Shrek. Yeah, yeah. Let's see the laugh. Shrek one. Mike was asking Elsa. Why? Let's Elsa? see the Shrek one. Right. <laughs> um, I have a picture of his dick somewhere. I can't show that online because I'll probably get done for something. But they were unsolicited, so like, what did he expect? Yeah, it can be anybody. Um. So he puts his welly through the paper and draws a cartoon character. <laughs> Don't show the I love that. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, my, my lovely love heart-shaped balls for you. That's the smallest willy I've ever seen yeah. in my life. Yeah. Not that I've seen many willies, but I, I, I know what it should look like. Was it, so how old is he? I have no idea. He sent me randomly on Instagram. Like, I don't. I have no idea who he is. He was just like, hi, mistress, can you laugh at this? Fucking, I l laughing at them is my favourite thing to do, but it seems that all <laughs> men who have micro penises <laughs> like them laughed at. But if you have a micro penis... <laughs> <laughs> what are you meant to do other than be laughed at? Like, you can't just be like, no, it's really big, I promise. That's crazy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, see, I mean, how can you, how can you look at men like, outside? Can you? And, and, like, and think, because like, they're all full of shit, like, I, I will say no. that, but how can, when the industry you're in, the shit that you've been through as well, like, how mm. can you look at somebody, how can somebody be speaking to you and you think, ah, or do you feel gullible again where it's a possibility or do you just totally guarded with totally seediness. yeah no and i feel like as well when i was younger or like not even very long ago but during like i'm sure you you've told your daughter right you go no no men only want one thing like be careful you go yeah I'm like, okay and then you go no no he likes me like he actually likes me. no they fucking don't they don't and it's like every single man like when when me and Grace travel alone, right? Was it a fucking parade of them? It was awful. Like the men, there was like there was a man at the desk, and like we were just wanting to go through. We had an hour until we were boarding, right? And there was an issue with our tickets. He was like flexing his muscles on the phone. He was like, 
he was like being like oh my god yeah so like you have monzo business and we we were like just give us the tickets like chill the fuck out Mm -hmm. his friend came over and they were like doing this just it's just a bit weird and like now every time i come into contact with anyone i'm just like i feel like you know yeah like a bit odd um and i feel like it has ruined my perception of some some men of life yeah yeah there's a lot of married men relationships that come in your only fans yeah the amount of people but i never know what to say because i'm like like i'm glad you're here but like you should be with your wife it's a form of cheating yeah i i think if i had a boyfriend and i'd found out that they'd got someone else's only fans oh like i would not be happy it's a form of cheating i even messaging girls back on instagram or a girl messaging boys back it's a form of cheating it's an interaction there's no different from a whatsapp message yeah. that but we're living in a day and age where it's acceptable that's why relationships break down so easy yeah. it's too easy to meet somebody it is so and do you know what the other thing is it's very damaging towards uh everyone's mentality guys and girls because with tiktok with instagram you can now see hundreds of thousands of people where it's it's like where they're gorgeous they're beautiful they face up themselves like they are this level of people so when usually you'd go down to your local pub and you see someone you go they're all right they're nice you know we'll have babies right you can't have that anymore because like everyone's ugly to these hundreds of thousands of beautiful people that are face apt and edited online do you know what I mean? It's scary because the, the amount of fo- the amount of porn and stuff people consume mm. in a day was our fucking ancestors I've never even seen in a lifetime. No, it's so damaging to the brain. Our phones are so damaging to whatever this amazing thing is we've got yeah. up here, and we just destroy it. It's not even like phones though necessarily. Like when I was in Amsterdam, I went to one of them sex shows because I was like, I really want to see this. It's going to be amazing. Some of them were. And there was like women doing crazy shit and it was great. And then there was like an actual sex scene at the end. I am not shitting you when I say the guy probably had to take a Viagra and he was like, just like fucking her. And the girl was like, (laughs) and she like, the guy was like fucking going. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, we, we had to leave. I was like, this isn't enjoyable. Like I can tell she doesn't like this. Like that's not nice. It was, it that's what i mean like i bet when she first started doing that i was really empowering she was getting loads of money she loved these people looking at her and now it's like fuck do you know what i mean it's like not yeah it's not a turn on anymore it's not no. an attraction but that's anything in life consistency with it can be damaging it can yeah. be boring yeah because change is always important when was the last time you cried um <laughs> uh probably yesterday i'm a crier i cry everything see, that's why i actually don't seem it but even oh. when you're talking about the past and stuff, do you feel as yeah. if you try and be brave about it all, mm. which is important, but do you feel as if that yeah, you're guarded I've... with a lot of the dark stuff and yeah. you probably cry at the, the most stupidest thing? Yeah. I feel like I feel like if I was to cry, it'd be like like a full on like breakdown of of a wall that like wouldn't be ready to break down. Like even when um like with my like when my stepmom died and everything, I think that's why I just isolated myself for like six months. I didn't go to any lessons. I like taught myself at home and like I did really well on my GCSEs. And then afterwards I was like, I don't want to speak to anyone. Like even now, like I've, I've never been a social person, but like, I feel like I'm good with people, but like the thought of going out or like going to something every week, like a little club or whatever, where I could like meet people. I'm like, I don't want any friends. Like I I have enough friends. I have like two or three but I feel like everyone's out to hurt me. So it's like quite difficult to get past that. No, but you can understand that because you have mm. been hurt. Every man that's come into life has fucked you over, especially the ones who should have been there the most. It's not even Your men, father. Though. Like all men, yeah, but like as girls as well, especially in this industry, it's, it, it can be really damaging. I've known quite a lot of girls who are like quite damaged, maybe in their own way, maybe from this industry, but like... It, how they've treated me has been just as bad, if not worse than the men, because they've not had that want of a sexual desire. They're just hurting for the sake of hurting. 
But hurt people hurt people. Yeah, 100%. Do you understand that? Huh? Yeah. If at a young age, like, you've got to get that right. Like, if they're broken, it's not that they're necessarily bad. It's just all they know. Yeah. It's all they know. And that's the scary thing. And I always say that. But if you're hurt, you, you tend to see anybody that comes around you, you hurt them as well. Yeah. Until you take the reins, until you go and get help, until you mm. try and make changes to them. See the world definitely better your life. Yeah. That's the beautiful thing about it. You can fucking make the, the changes to them do whatever the fuck you want yeah. but it takes time it takes years man like, it's just so when people are hurting you male and female like mm. then how do you would you just become a recluse from your whole, the whole fucking yeah. existence just sit in your house and make content I don't know like I think at the moment I am but I think that's because I'm in a, a state of like for for a long while I was like in a really bad state of I feel like my friends are like dropping off like flies and I'm like do you know when you see someone with no friends you go but who's the issue? Do you know what I mean? You're like, oh, why have you got no friends? It's like, I have friends, but I'm usually the person to be like, to wonder that about people. So when my friends are like dropping off like flies, I'm like, mm, am I the reason? Like, am I the bad person? Am I, like, is there something going on that like I can't handle like anything? And um, I think it's like really difficult to come to come to the conclusion that that isn't the case and I'm not a bad person and these things like are happening like they're just not my friends if they're hurting me they're just not my friends it's not anything that I've done it might be letting them in letting them take too much before they've really crossed a boundary and then me saying they don't do that but like I, th I think that's the hardest thing and I think I'll get there I think at the moment it's a bit of a, a bit of a difficult one to not be a recluse but like i think it's just like it's safer in it sometimes yeah how many subscribers have you got to only fans uh, um like around 10k how much is that a month <laughs> oh <laughs> is it all different packages it it's not not different packages so like it's 25 dollars mad isn't it <laughs> it's twenty five dollars a month, but like the first month is always half price. Um, and yeah, like once you subscribe, you pay that set price, and there's like there's thousands of like media posts and videos and photos and everything you can see, and then obviously messages on top of that. If it's if it's a a two no, if it's a five digit month, it's a bad month. So ten thousand subscribers. 25 quid so if you're making five figures a month it's a bad month mm. and six figures is a good month yeah have you ever made seven figures in a month no i've not i've not had a million million dollar month now it's doable it's doable but then this is the other thing like it's like okay if i was to have a seven figure month like it would be amazing but then would I just want that every month? Would I just be like chasing this constant high that I'm not going to get? You're already chasing it though. Yeah. I think everyone's constantly, the whole point of life is people are looking for that feeling of good. Like they're looking to no, be happy. We, we and want to feel like, We want to feel accepted. Yeah. But even the men, you'll be manipulating them. Yeah. They know this. You yeah. know it. Is it. See, do you feel a sense that you've got your power back when you can, when you've got so many men who would do anything for you, if you know what I mean? maybe maybe it's like this whole sense of a god complex i'm unaware mm -hmm. of but you, you, that's what it's like yeah. though yeah you've got fucking ten thousand. you've got an army there basically yeah, Ooh, uh, yeah. yeah. Is it? <laughs> you've got ten thousand men like i say it's like an army that like, do you have you've spoken well you clearly have but what's your boundaries i i won't do porn like full-on hardcore porn um i do stuff by myself I, I obviously because of everything, I have a very interesting relationship with sex. So I struggle with it sometimes. I struggle to like make a new video sometimes. So like there's been like a few months where I just, oh, I won't make one because I'm not in the headspace to like, I don't want to pretend that I'm enjoying it. Like I have to be in a mood to be like, oh, okay, I can do this now. And I don't want to ever do it if I'm not comfortable doing it because what's going to happen is I'll film it. And it's happened before when I've been with like past management where I filmed it because they've been like, we need a new video every week. And I filmed it. And then a few days later, I've gone to edit it and I'll be like, I look so sad. Like I can't, I'm not putting that out. So I, I'm always having to do things when I'm comfortable. 
Um, and I think the other big thing is like, it's really difficult to remember when you're making the money. But like, say if you have, for example, 100 grand in a month, right? Say if you were earning 50 grand in the month, is that month, is, is your quality of life going to be changed with 50 grand less? What were you going to do with that 50 grand? Like, what did you need it for? But then if you have a 25 grand month, are you st- are you actually spending 25 grand in that month? No one, I don't know of any fucker who spends 25 grand in a month. Like, I think I have the smallest outgoings ever. Like, I, I spend it on my dogs. What dogs you got? I got I got two whippets and an Italian greyhound. They're just weird fuckers. They're, they're really fast. hard. They're fast, but they're really odd. Like I've got mm. the Italian greyhound piggy is like the weirdest dog you'll ever meet. It's like he's like a, a cat velociraptor thing. Mm-hmm. And um I spend a lot of money on them. I like to travel. Like, but I did have the conversation with my mum the other day. I was like, I, I when you're younger, I was like, money would never change me. But I think it does in like really odd ways. And it hasn't changed me in the way that I'm like, and I think I'm better than everyone. And like, no one's at my level. And like, you know, oh, I can't ride on a bus. Do you know what I mean? But I think it's changed me in, in a a way of like, seeing the world more complex. And I think it's really interesting when you have a normal job, you go, oh, I can really work for a promotion or I can I can work for this or I'll be happy if I get this. And it's a really odd thing now to be like, okay, what now? Like, it, it feels like there's almost this tick list of life, right? So you grow up, you get a house, you get a dog, you get a boyfriend, like, or a girlfriend or whatever. You go on holidays, you have kids, get married, die it's like what the fuck is the point like you gotta just like do whatever you like actually want <laughs> the Wait, <Grim> Reaper. yeah <laughs> but it's, uh, i think people say money changes people it doesn't it just shows the a more they're more under the spotlight because what happens is if you're a good person and you make money mm. and make more money you're still a good person yeah if you're a wanker and you, and you make money and you're a, you're just a you're bigger a wanker, wanker. Money. Yeah, yeah do you know what i mean like i think people say oh you see your true colors you probably do but the person's still the same the money yeah. doesn't change them good or bad it just they're still that same person just yeah. with an extra a bigger car or whatever yeah. the fuck it is or, like, i know people weigh money and they're good people but ask them the question what the fuck's all about and it's they don't know either no alfie best that like, billionaire gypsy that like, still gets up and works every day yeah says why should i stop yeah but everyone needs like a purpose you need a purpose like I, I've recently been thinking like, oh, maybe I need to go and volunteer at like an animal sanctuary or something because I need that like consistency of like a normal life. Like everyone needs it. And it's it's really hard. Do you know if you say to someone who hasn't got a lot of money, if you had a thousand or like a million dollars or pounds or whatever right now, what would you buy? They'd be like a house, a really flashy car and a yacht, right? No, you wouldn't. You get to a point where you can afford a yacht and you're like, what the fuck is the point in a yacht? Like, I can't even swim. Mm. Like, it's it's just a really odd, like, concept. And it feels like, it feels like now I've got a house that I own outright. I've got two really nice cars, which I'm selling because I'm like, what the fuck is the point in having nice cars? Like, I don't even, I don't like driving. And it's like, I'm living in this, like, big fancy house that I want to move out of because it feels too big. It's, like, empty. It's a bit lonely. And then it's like, you, it feels like you've ticked off all the things and then you're you're being like, okay, well, what now? It's like you, you've you completed this game and then you're at the end bit, whereas there's no more quests to do. You're just like in a simulation of being like, oh, I can just like go around and like spend bits of money. It's really odd. Like you've got to constantly find something that's giving you more yeah, joy. You've, it's fucking difficult though because people have not got enough time. They've either got to yeah. work, get the kids from school, make the dinners, yeah. clean the house, up in the morning and do the same routine. So it's hard when you're in that loop. Yeah. 99% of the world are in that loop. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's so hard. Like human beings, as human beings in a whole are just struggling because yeah. they don't know what the fuck is going on, man. They're just yeah. following the agenda, the rules from the government who genuinely do not give two fucks about you. Like, yeah. So when you're in this life then, like, when do you 
how can you then separate what's real and what's fake? If you're a recluse and you're doing this shit for 10,000 men following you, and then it's not real. No. But it's your world just now, but how yeah. can you... Yeah, it, it feels real to me. Like, yeah. like, cause like that's the world that I live in. Mm -hmm. But I, I do find it, I don't... But it is a bubble. It is a bubble. Do you understand that as well? Yeah, and I think it, it's really hard to come away from that because like say, like I went to see my mum and then like I've started like a TikTok like vlog channel, right? So just people can get to know me more. And like we were going out and we were feeding the lambs and like that's what I genuinely needed to just make my, my act, like my childhood heart feel happy again, right? Because mm. my adult heart, a bit broken right now because of all the stuff that's happened. So I'm like, oh, I need to go back to my parents' house. I need to like feed the lambs. And I was getting my phone out and I was like videoing it. And my mom's like, why are you doing that? She's like, just be here. And I was like, oh yeah. I was like, oh. So it is, even social media, like even if you don't do OnlyFans, it is just this bubble that you live in of, everyone needs to see what I'm doing right now. Like, and it's it's worrying and it's yeah. it's worrying for me, like realizing that I'm doing it because I, I think if I looked at my screen time, oh, it would be so bad. I'm the same, but then I use the excuse I need it for work. Yeah, so I do I. I don't need to look at every fucking comment. I don't like it, the views I'm pulling in, but I do because I care of how I'm perceived as well. And, yeah. and no matter what I say, no matter how oh, I'm working on ego, I've got pure ego. I'm a control freak, man. I need to, yeah. I'm, I'm a leader, man. I, yeah, I'm, but it's, it's the whole thing of yeah. every single human. I don't care who you are. You you All you need is to be accepted and loved by people. Everyone is searching for like, the acceptance of people is like really odd. When is enough enough? I've not got that yet, so I don't know. I'll tell you when I find out. Yeah, hopefully you do that. Like, your TikTok, how did you get your TikTok popping? Nearly 2 million followers. That's a, that's, a, that's a big fucking number and there's not much. Yeah. You know what you're doing? You're, however, you're playing you're playing the game very well with that. Oh, like, thank you. The sexiness, the, the uh, shown enough to get. It's just mm. perverted. It's just... Yeah. In, but you've not got links to your only fans and that how's why why so so it goes to my instagram and then there's a link on my instagram so it's it's quite easy that way but um yeah i don't i don't know because recently as i say i've started this vlogging channel and that's mainly going towards girls right because girls are the one who cares about a daily routine or like what you're what you're doing doing this activity you guys don't really care about that guys will follow very quickly for like a sexual thing and I feel like I've spent the past two years perfecting the sexual thing it's like I could post anything I know it'll get views I know it'll get likes I know it'll get comments because I know how to give that that sexualness of like making a guy want me and like even what to do with my fucking eyes like like all of it because it's like a whole it's a whole persona and then when I go on to like my vlogging one and like someone's like left a mean comment I'm like that hurts so much more it's so much more of a deep cut because like that's actually me do you know what I mean whereas this when people leave a mean comment about something I'm doing that's sexual I'm like oh whatever cool how do you deal with the trolls surprisingly I don't get many um like I don't know how I've managed it. I've never had that much hate. And like, I think I'm, I've been really lucky that way. I think the, the few times that I've had hate has really badly affected me because I'm constantly looking for that validation, even if I want to like kid myself, like everyone is. And when people, if someone said something and other people have liked that comment or agreed with it, I'm like, oh my God, like, is that an actual issue with myself? Like, like the other day I got called fat and I was like, like I know I'm not fat, right? <laughs> but then I was like, ah, okay, I'll go on a diet. Because like someone else liked it. And I was like, so if two people agree, like, and it's it can be really damaging. That was from one comment. So like that's not everyone commenting, being like saying the same thing. But I don't know if like I, I've had quite a few friends who get a lot of trolls. I've had friends who will encourage the trolls because that's how they get more engagement. That's how they get people over to their their other pages. But it's just. But I think with your stuff as well, it's the girl next door. You still got that innocence, yeah, the sweetness where people are. Ah, they'll not say nasty things. Mm -hmm. You've got girls out there who are quite in your face, and yeah, there's an energy about it. Yeah, like you're playing the game to a T. The character that you've built 
it's working but i think that's probably because it is it is me like i feel like whenever anyone meets me they're like oh like do you know who you are though if i'm honest yeah i'd like to think so i think i I know who i am in a personal level everything online to an extent is a persona yeah um but yeah i think i think if i was to like live alone on like a deserted island for a few weeks i think i'd be like quite happy and content in myself i don't think i'd get like really in my head about like like i don't even know who i am i think it's when i get too far deep into the bubble and caring about the numbers and the money that's when i go fuck like i need to take a step back and i need to like deal with myself how does the only fans work if you're making six figures a month how does it work with tax and all the others that kind of this shady stuff around that tax is a fucker i i do everything above board because i am terrified of hmrc um and i have got really good accountants they're they're really lovely and they they help with everything um but yeah tax is like it's like 20 percent of your earnings like like full stop and then corporation tax then self-employment tax all of it is just Mm -hmm. yeah that's a fucker um but as i say i've been like really smart so i i give to charities every month i work really closely with a few charities um what charity what do you do uh i work with um a korean meat dog charity and it was actually someone up north i fostered a korean meat dog and like we were just talking and i was like yeah i want to sponsor you so now i give them something every month and they're able to like bring like a bunch of dogs over and i hopefully the end goal is to create a shelter in the uk that they can come over and decompress before they go into a household um but again like it's not an owl but like that's tax-free right if you if you give how many thousands to a charity like they that's fine um what else i've like since i earned my first 10k i put away for pensions ices like i've i've been really smart with my money putting it into properties like i don't think i've been i feel like i've got a good head on my shoulders yeah for a very young age and everything you've been through you could be sitting here on the fucking crack pipe alcohol like people thought of it yeah yeah, do you know what i mean like it can you're too far gone but like you see you've still got your head on your shoulders which is a good thing it's just the only thing been doing that consistently for another 10 years it's it can't be then become damaging i've interviewed enough people to see there's something i miss in their eyes that yeah hopefully don't get caught up too much in it like but how does it feel then being only fans millionaire like living the lavish lifestyle that do you feel good about how far you've come also, especially what you've been through? So I give you credit for that. Like, do you feel good? Yeah. Or do you still feel as if it's not enough or something's not right? I think I, again, you're you're always chasing something where the grass is greener. Like I, I feel good and I'm like really proud of myself. Um, and I feel really good about the fact that it's not, it's not changed who I am and like when I was younger and I heard anyone struggling I'd be like oh, I wish I just had something to give you and now I can but like it's you're you're always gonna chase like if you're fulfilled in a work sense like because I'm doing great there that's fine like I'm really happy and it's like okay well now I've like neglected myself so now I need to take a step back from then like even if I have a five figure month like that's not going to affect me that's fine now i can invest more time into myself and make myself happier and i think it's just finding the balance now that is hard because there's also so much pressure like if you're one of the top only fans girls in the uk right everyone like i don't mean below me as in like below me but like everyone who is looking up to you is copying what you're doing so like if you do um, fucking spin the wheel, a try on haul, whatever, you can guarantee that every OnlyFans girl in the UK is going to do that. If you do a like a professional TikTok, so like I think me and Elle were the first ones to make a professional TikTok with like cameras and everyone started that. Do you know what I mean? Like it's and it's little things, but it's constantly finding something new that's the difficult thing. And I think it's got to a point now that the new thing is like being you like especially on tiktok what i'm seeing is like the bigger things 
are the personality things. And it's really hard to get there. It's really hard to get a following for that because we're like brainwashed to just be sexual. And like, that's how you get a following. But I think like actually having your personality in it is like the next big thing. Mm. So, how did your relationship with Brooks start? Uh, we started working together um, in Simp Squad. I don't know if you know what that, that is. It was, it was a girl group of me, Elle, Rhiannon, uh, Bonnie, and Daisy Drew. What was doing? It was like, we did OnlyFans, TikTok, YouTube videos, everything. But it was actually like quite damaging. Why? Oh my God. <laughs> like, so we, we all got together and we were all making all these TikToks. We, we were making an OnlyFans. We did all of this stuff and it was actually like, it, it, like it was really beneficial, like money wise, right? But we were having to get together for a whole week every month without fail to like have enough content and within that week was it a week it was quite a while it was a good like four or five days within that time it was like it was draining like it was a lot of work and I think by like the third month everyone started being compared everyone there was a lot of hate comments um there was a lot of like comparing this girl to that girl the blonde girls to the brunette girls the like it was a lot of stuff like that and then um and then like everyone started putting in what work they were going to get done right so they were like oh well, I'm going to get lipo I'm going to get bbl oh I've just like had my whole face dissolved and I'm going to have it all put back in but differently I'm going to get like my teeth done I'm going to get my bum done like and it was like this one big it was like getting all of these like personalities that were really big all clashed together and then compared to each other when like OnlyFans girls like are probably like you will not meet an OnlyFans girl who's like no I've had a great childhood and I'm like really happy I just thought it'd be fun like everyone's kind of damaged in their own way right mm -hmm. and um it was doing that and then putting it in like the most insecure environment that we could have been in so then everyone got mega insecure wanted to change everything about themselves and then yeah it's probably not a good environment have you had any work done no no because i've had Elle and she's had her fanny and that done tits everything yeah it's mad yeah <laughs> it's that it's that industry like it's, it's like i say you've got your head screwed on yeah i would tell you straight you've got your head screwed on you've done the right things you've yeah. been through your misery and pain for the past listen it's life more shit is going to come yeah hopefully not as dark as what has been but yeah it's just the, the fucking circle of life, man. It's a mad, mad roller coaster. Where do you go forward for the future? Like, you're fucking only 22, like, oh, no. but where do you go? I, What's your, do you get plans? Do you get visions? Like, I, I want to, I want to go into property. I want to go get to a point where I, I want a charity. I want, I want to get to a point where like. You want to save your dogs, don't you? I, I want to save all animals. Like. Are you I, vegan? I'm vegetarian. Um, I can't give up cheese. I just yeah, it's not about you listen if you're vegan as well there's more fucking animals and insects get killed being vegan and anything like with so the, like palm oil and yeah, shit yeah so it's all people's trying to save the world but you got to save yourself yeah be, be ruthless and, and, be and also right do you know if like if i'm vegan that's not going to make a difference if i'm if i'm vegan when i have the choice if i'm vegetarian when i have the choice if you didn't eat red meat for three days out of the week that would make the biggest difference rather than everyone being vegan that would put the world in the opposite direction right like just the same as if everyone ate red meat every single day of their life if everyone was just like more aware of what they eat or where it came from like then it's fine just just be more aware of it like for yeah. anybody that's watching because you've been through some dark shit. You're still here smiling. You're still here making dough. Doesn't matter what we say. It does, <laughs> it does ease the pain a wee bit. It I love does it. fucking yeah. ease the pain a yeah. wee bit. Listen, it's not everything, but it does. If you're an alright person, you can enjoy it and yeah. the finer things in life. But for anybody that's maybe went through something that you've went through mm. and it's took you 10 years, and mm. I, I can I, I seen earlier you were kind of hesitant towards it, I understand. Yeah. It's such a brave thing to do. This will go out to the masses so people will understand you. It's not just yeah. all... Only fans and speaking to fucking 
pervert. Sorry for anybody that's <laughs> on OnlyFans, but there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah. I believe this is only the start of an amazing career and an amazing journey that you're going to go through. But for anybody that's been in the struggle and maybe too scared to speak out, what advice would you have for them? What's the worst that can happen? Honestly, like the worst that can happen is like you you will be taken ser seriously. Someone will take you seriously and like people will listen, people will believe you and it's it, once it's out, that's the hard thing done. And then from there it's just well, hopefully a fire up the ass for the other person. So. Yeah, or a bell to the head. Yeah, yeah, you know, either or. Which all your your social media links like Instagram, TikTok, OnlyFans for people who want to get involved, come and see yeah. you, come and have a wee look. Yeah. Maybe send you pictures of fucking Walt Disney, <laughs> whatever. Oh my god, please send them. Yeah, cute. Yeah. That's the enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Um yes, yeah, so my my Instagram is it's Emily Black. Um my <laughs> <laughs> if you want. Some, come on. Um my uh I have like a bunch of different tiktoks there's emily black talk it's emily black x like there's a there's a bunch of my only fans is at e m b l a c k just m black emily for coming on a day hen telling <laughs> your story listen massive strength I thank appreciate you. everything you're doing. Thank you for having maybe me. Maybe the on. only fans and that like maybe you could be doing something a bit more constructive for in life and later <laughs> yeah. on. But I believe big things will happen later. Nice. So you've got a kind heart, good soul. But would you like to finish up on anything? Uh I feel like I I just want to point out, I feel like I've like made it like seem like the worst thing ever and I've had the worst life ever. Like I genuinely am very like I feel like I'm I'm good. Yeah, I don't want to like come on and be like yeah, I'm like the the poor rich girl. Like yeah. I I have a good life. It's happy. Like I know I'm very privileged and I'm like very grateful to everything. So if you've ever subscribed to my OnlyFans or follow me, like I very much appreciate everyone. I don't feel like I'm like hard done by by any means. Yeah, because you don't want to be a victim. No. Uh, as much as people can be and we so a lot of people are, you, it's hard not to so a lot of people can live on it and it yeah. can be dark and it can destroy their whole life and it's totally understandable. But like you say, you don't want to be No hear crying and hear feel sorry if you get it like I get, yeah. like everybody deals with different levels of trauma in, yeah. in different ways so. I don't feel like I am a victim like I feel like bad shit happens to everyone and like regardless of your if you're drowning in a fucking tablespoon of water or a fucking river like you're still drowning like everyone's issues are valid no matter what and like you're fine you, you will fucking you tell will them, get on you tell them listen <laughs> wish you nothing but success for the future God bless you and take care